it's so nice to meet you all again on this lovely friday evening and it's great to see the energy and enthusiasm of the community still being kept alive and aloft and without any attenuation and uh, to spice up this team talk session we have a very special person with us without uh, further ado let us get to introducing uh, this awesome person so what uh, the person who we have with us now is uh, like brace yourself for his incredibly royal but lengthy name his name is vijay praveen maharajan and he is the chief executive officer of bits crunch he hails from germany and uh, he has quite uh, a vast spectrum of experience in the crypto space and he has been very actively involved in data analytics throughout his career and he has uh, worked with a lot of reputed brands like Volkswagen and Siemens and uh, he has also been a TED speaker and so that's uh, a big bundle of multiple avenues of talent and uh, we have uh, on top of that a person who uh, heads an organization that specializes in uh, the crypto space in in blockchain space audits so uh welcome welcome to the team talk vijay it's uh, great to have you here and you can just call me caf i know caffeine is just a bit long but you can call me caf hi caf uh, thanks thanks for the the great intro uh, glad to be here talking to the jump trade community and then the guardian link community i have never been to one ama before in discord uh, i was there for a few minutes i was listening to one talk but this is my first uh, invite over discord so glad to be here thanks uh, i think it's like what to say uh, it's it's a very uh, uh, it's a big melange of privilege for us as well like what to say the fact that you have listened to us at some point in time makes us feel great and it's even better a feeling to have you as a, a speaker today so uh, we are just going to prod your intellect for a lot of insights mm-hmm. over this uh, conversation so uh, let's start with a very cliched uh, question that we ask most of our uh, uh, guest speakers a little bit about your uh, awesome creation bits crunch and uh, what mm-hmm. it does and your story basically yeah sure um, uh, technically so uh, but a little bit more about myself first and then to bits crunch so i, I hail uh, from chennai i am originally from tirunelveli which is a small city in in tamil nadu because i see a lot of tamil names as well so magilchi <laughs> so i i come from there uh, did my schools bachelors uh, in india and then i moved to germany 10 years ago so i came here uh, to do my masters in munich and um uh, since then i i live here i worked for foxwagen and siemens and then i started bits crunch so we crunch each and every bits of data that is behind nfts so that's that's the birth of bits crunch founded it in 2020 established it in germany in 2021 so we are pretty much like one one to two years old entity and the journey has been amazing so far uh, we have got investments from Uh, some of the amazing investors in this space we got investments from coinbase ventures polygon studios crypto.com capital and animoca brands uh, just recently chainlink joined uh, as as an investor alongside hashkey capital and gate gate labs so yeah the, what what we look into is we we look into wash trades where people flip nfts for higher prices i i also see a lot of pfps here uh, a lot of people keeping nfts as their profile pictures uh, but unfortunately in some cases people used to inflate its price by just flipping it for higher prices so we just keep track of that inform the retail users uh, like like the users who are listening right now and and also to the marketplaces where the market places will be more transparent to the users and at the same time we also look into fair price estimation of nfts so we we look at uh, what's what's the price what's the minted price what the tr- what's the trading price and then we advise again the retail users and also the market places on what's the fair price of this nft so yeah in in, in short we are the 
tick mark of NFTs. We would like to be the tick mark of NFTs in the near future. And yeah, we, we are well on that track, I, I suppose. Thanks. That's really splendid, Vijay. Thank you for that lovely introduction. So it's more like uh, it's been a cascade of awesome thing so it started right from that etymology we crunch every bit of data and then you were talking about your formidable portfolio of investors and it's like what's it's the kind of uh, name that um, that every crypto projects uh, project wants to see crypto and its associated projects want to see and then you were talking about what you do and uh, i guess it's it's all falling in place and it's uh, it's Great to have someone of your caliber and someone of your track record with us. So, uh, and I think our community will also be very happy and very assured that they are going to get a lot of insightful bits of information, to say the least. So let us get started with the questions that um, we, uh, we as a community and uh, a lot of people around have to ask you. So um, mm -hmm. NFTs, the, like, what is it? these are three letters that might not have made any sense like about some seven, eight years ago. But today they are like a craze. And uh, how do you think the current state of NFTs are? And what's your uh, your your perception on the evolution of NFTs? Like uh, th there was once a time when it was just about cats and pixelated images. And now it's like all over the place. So uh, it's a beautiful story of expansion. It's a beautiful story of blooming uh, or uh, however you call it. So what uh, what's your take on this current state of the market? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you ask me, I, I own a startup that uh, that looks at NFTs 360 degrees uh, from a 360 degree perspective, 24 bar 7. So I have a strong conviction towards NFTs. And uh, if you ask me, we are slowly moving away from the famous PFPs where people started looking at it as a JPEG because I... I got into this space uh, very serious when the famous $69 million NFT got sold in, in Feb 2021. And everybody was talking about people uh, who sold that uh, particular piece of NFT. But then there were hardly people speaking about who bought it. right? And, and that's when I, I decided to dig deeper and found out that he was Meta Coven who purchased that NFT for $69 million. And surprisingly, he comes from Chennai. <laughs> Back in Chennai, people, uh, I, I, I know Chennai very well. We are, I've been there several number of times. And people from Chennai, they, they don't really get a couple of idlis for 100 bucks. <laughs> they rant over it. But somebody coming from my place and getting uh, an NFT worth of $16 billion, that, that really convinced me to jump into this space and I wanted to build an infrastructure project uh, which looks at uh, NFT scams, NFT forgeries, and so on. And uh, yeah, so f starting from there, and if you look at the current scenario, we, we have probably moved out from the PFPs slowly. Uh, also, the art category is also a bit saturated but i expect the gaming nfts to hit the coffin hard next and also music nfts and then so many things uh, that that could potentially emerge out of this nft thing so i'm, I'm really excited uh, like you guys on what what to expect from this space next so it's more like um, NFTs have conquered so much uh, already, uh, but they still have a lot more. And uh, it's it's almost like it's left to the imagination of creators as to how far uh, the possibilities can stretch uh, with regards to NFTs. Uh, right. So, uh, and we have also seen this transition or graduation or evolution, however we call it. A lot of brands, they are moving from their Web 2.0 ecosystem into Web 3. And uh, this is bringing brands closer to people. And uh, how do you think, uh, what do you think it means for uh, the community and uh, how will it influence the future of NFTs? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if, if you look at the mother of all brands uh, that, that ventured into Web3, I would say Facebook changing its name to Meta. Uh, that, that clearly tells 
people that uh, the community owned or or user generated model which is web3 is, is going to be the future right i mean come on somebody who has built facebook and turned into a trillion dollar company is is coming out and saying that uh, he wants to rebrand that to meta which is which is which in itself uh, answers your question and you you see a lot of other brands like adidas uh, reebok nike and then recently tiffany and go launched their nft collections and samson is integrating nfts onto their tvs lg is building an nft marketplace on hedera hashcraft so uh, as you progress you could potentially see a lot of brands coming into nfts because it's not just about the craze it's not just that they are fomoing in but i believe that uh, they 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 follow this space very closely and and they kind of see the potential of what it can do right uh, if if you want to potentially uh, offer your fans or your uh, customers something back in return then through nfts this is well and truly possible and uh, that is that is what the brands are trying to do right so yes we today it it, it is it, it could be 50 brands tomorrow it could be 500 and, and more and so i expect a lot of brands to come into this space just to stabilize this space more even more and uh, that is where even bit scrunch could come in handy because we we uh, figure out we help uh, help out those entities from getting rid of those scams so for instance we have an ip infringement uh, tool that lets uh, that that checks if uh, for instance if puma's logo or adidas logo is is used by someone else randomly just to sell their nfts so yeah uh, uh, to me we are like a baby in this space and and we need to crawl we need to get up we we, we could fall sometimes but ultimately the goal is to not run from day one but gradually uh we will be there that's quite insightful and i really like the way you brought in a, a, a very compact but powerful example of facebook i mean like facebook is such a very such a specific word whereas meta is so generic but still the rebranding happened which means meta is here to stay and uh, come to think of it this is how i mean like if at all discord existed in the early 2000s probably this would have been the kind of discussion that people would have had regarding websites right so i think every uh, technical progression will have to go through this uh, particular phase and uh, we have pioneers and we have people who are doing it beautifully and we also have uh, like what to say uh, stabilizers if i may call it uh, stabilizers of the ecosystem like bits crunch and uh, if things fall in place if things are falls to fall in place and if they do i think it's going to be beautiful so um this entire uh, nft and uh, blockchain everything coming in it 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 kind of all focuses on decentralization but there is a little bit of a tug of war between centralization and decentralization and uh, so uh, i think centralization or any uh, incumbent uh, technology or thought process is bound to have its inertia so where exactly is this fine point where do you think is the fine point between i mean it might not be a point it could be a zone as well so is there a fine point or a fine zone that could exist between centralization and decentralization mm-hmm. so uh, look i mean everybody is building uh, in this space to move towards decentralization where everything is on chain everything is recorded everything is transparent to the to the public to the community and and that's the beauty of the space but if you ask me if we are here in decentralized world i, I would say not yet uh, i mean look look our project is an infrastructure project uh, we use most of the de- centralized services right now at this point in time so we use uh, google databases we use amazon data servers and we slowly migrate from centralization to decentralization i mean that's how it happens uh, in pretty much in most of the cases i mean look at uh, chains even even chains like uh, binance uh, what what happened with binance yesterday uh, there was a, 
there was a drain of, of several million dollars i believe but they halted the chain and, and even solana they they always halt their chain once in a while so it's it's not completely decentralized as such i mean if you ask me decentralized applications yes bitcoin is right up there uh, nobody controls it nobody runs it it is automatically uh, flowing like a river and then ethereum comes next but uh, most of the other projects still rely on centralization in some or other ways and then that's where we are currently and, and we cannot deny this fact and we we shouldn't also focus on decentralization right from day one i always uh, look up to examples of mobile phones uh, i still remember our first mobile phone which was like uh, very bulky very heavy and then now look at the mobile phones it's it's very sleek we have those touch screens and we have these awesome designs uh, and the same with uh, computers as well uh, if you remember the first macintosh it was like really huge and then even before that the very first computer was like the size of a room so it everything needs time to emerge and we, we believe i strongly believe that we'll be there uh, in 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 some time but it could be 3 years it could be 5 years it could be 10 years but the good thing is we are already moving uh, moving fast towards that uh, i look up to a lot of founders in this space and and they are building really great projects and then our goal is to also decentralize bitscrunch and that is one of the reasons why in spite of having all the possibilities for us to have an equity model we wanted to uh, do a token model token play and that's where community that's where the team that's where everybody gets full transparency because everything is on chain i mean you you, you don't really know what uh, uh, vijay is checking out <laughs> for instance but at least somebody knows uh, okay these sorts of funds are moving out of this window and that is coming in uh, to the chain so yeah we will eventually go there but uh, we are not yet there that's my take thank you thank you so much vijay and uh, uh, i i really like the way you were so practical and uh, yeah it it uh, i think decentralization needs its time to uh, to get its share of awareness to get its share of um, adoption and to become mainstream and uh, <clears throat> yeah yeah look, look at look at open sea which is one of the top nft players they are pretty much centralized uh, and then uh, what, what what do you expect from a lot of other collections or other projects in the space so yes eventually we'll be there uh, but to begin with yes we'll have one foot here and a half foot there and then we'll gradually jump onto the decentralization like what to say it's it's almost like centralization is the child and decentralization is the adult and right now a lot of uh, people are in their adolescence that's kind of like that not yet there but almost there and maybe if they're already there a little bit of it is on the other side uh, yeah i think this gray area always uh, happens for uh, any progress that challenges the status quo of a lot of things and uh, the next thing i wanted to ask was uh, you were talking about uh, centralization decentralization and uh, how uh, everything that is on chain has its own set of advantages and now come to think of nfts uh, is it possible and if yes how will it transform uh, the mechanism or uh, the perspective of uh, digital identities and uh, user data in in yeah you, how will it transform digital identities and user data oh, yeah when it, when it comes to data data sharing yes it's it's uh, still a question mark on how web3 companies will turn that around and and just 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 one piece of information i i also might have to leave a bit early because i i also have to uh listen to our own <laughs> ama which is which is hosted by hardeep who is also here uh so yeah just just uh, i want to throw this piece uh so um data data sharing yes um we we know how uh big companies evolved and and made use of the data 
very well. Uh, take for instance Google, Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, or or uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Everybody literally thrives on data. So most of the products are made available for free. Google search is free. Facebook is free. Twitter is free. But then uh, there are indirect costs. So our time is their money. So they they made hell a lot of money with with our data. And now it's really interesting to see uh, how Web3 is, is going to be uh, a barrier or a boon or a bane for this uh, data stuff. And I believe with wallets and, and more number of decentralized wallets, like in the case of MetaMasks, because I, I could literally create tens and tens of uh, thousands of MetaMask wallets just, just by two or three clicks. And uh, yes, uh, again, coming to that centralization part, is Binance as a centralized uh, exchange, Coinbase is again centralized, Kraken is there. So once we slowly move towards these decentralized uh, systems, it'll be interesting because your name, your identity is, is not going to be on chain anymore. And that's that's when it it also gets spicier uh, for for all the also the governments and the institutions to look around, look if uh, somebody is involving in any malicious activities. Uh, look, for instance, we are also tackling wash trading on NFTs. Uh, we we have identified ten plus patents so far, but uh, we need to also see uh, how it can be done on a larger scale when everybody is is on chain and. Uh, not using their identity. So yeah, even I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. So um, I'm curious on this. That's, that's really splendid. And uh, I think the, the entire Web3 spectrum is going to change the perception of identities itself. It's going to be digital first after a long time. I mean, not after a long time, for the first time. So, uh, and I also get that you also have another uh, AMA to attend. And as a very lighthearted brag, I would also let you like to let you know that even our community has a game to play in a in a very short oh. while. So, okay. so <laughs> let, let me just uh, let me just uh, ask you one last question that is related to gaming. Mm -hmm. So your uh, perspective on how NFTs and gaming are creating this beautiful confluence, and what is the future mm -hmm. of gaming and NFTs? Mm -hmm. Like I said at the beginning, um, from PFPs to arts to gaming, gaming will onboard the next millions and millions of users, in fact, even billions of users uh, into Web3. Uh, because that is what can, can change the complex of the whole Web3. Uh, and then if you have closely followed how much of investments are getting in, going into gaming, that's huge. Uh, a lot of gaming entities like Tencent, um, Ubisoft, and and a lot of game developers in the Web two ecosystem is is now uh, building stuffs on Web three. But like I said, it 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 will take time because to integrate NFTs or to integrate uh, coins or tokens onto games where users get to play and also earn. So there was play to earn games, move to earn games. And, and there, there were so many models which, which are already tried out and tested out. Uh, and then we still have a long way to go. So it, it took several years for companies to build, uh, for instance, PUBG and, and game of, uh, what is it, Call of Duty. And to to replicate, to make a replicate of, of the same in Web3, it requires time and effort. And I'm glad that uh, some of the top VCs and top gaming companies are building such things in Web3, which is already a good sign. But uh, yeah, we have to wait, uh, wait and see which is going to be the first uh, great Web3 game. Already there were a few. There was Axie Infinity, where people used to breed Axies at the beginning. And then there was Steppen, uh, just got into a hype and then got down. So yeah, you, you can see a lot of players coming in gradually. And also Yuga Labs with the other deal NFTs have also promised to launch a game, uh, if I am correct. So exciting stuff, exciting things ahead of us. And we'll have to f wait and see how it how this pans out.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Vijay. And I think it's like a perfect ending, not only in terms of time, but also in terms of the intensity of information you gave. Thank you so much for taking your time out. It was wonderful to converse with you and the kind of insights you brought in, they were really intense and intriguing. And uh, we hope that we'll be able to catch up with you again, uh, not just as a listener, but probably as a speaker. And like wishing you all the very best. And thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks a lot. And yeah, have a, have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye. You too, you too, Vijay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. So, uh, Jump Dot Raid fam, uh, as much as we would like to continue, uh, I've already seen like the number of users uh, on the Team Talk falling. So, I think it's high time and a good time that we close this Team Talk because the rookie uh, tournament is going to happen. And... With a very heartfelt wish for you all for the rookie tournament and also the next super clash that's going to happen after that. I'm taking leave and you can still keep your questions coming and we'll definitely uh, strive to answer them all. Thank you so much for being there and have a wonderful weekend. Let us catch up the coming Friday again. See you all.